Good evening, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to the May 11th meeting of the Brookfield Ag Commission. Our next meeting will be June 8th, and that's a fall planning meeting. Um, tonight, we have the pleasure of having Bill Thompson, former owner of Wilson's Floral Gardens, um, give us a presentation on how to grow pumpkins. Before I turn it over to Bill, I wanted to show you all the new Central Mass Grown uh, brochures that are out and available from any of the AgCom members, and Ken Cleveland has cases if anybody is really desperate for them. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Bill. Thank you. Um, my, my talk is supposed to be on how to grow pumpkins. Uh, most people already know how to grow pumpkins, but there's always a chance that somebody will be looking that doesn't know how to grow pumpkins, so hopefully I can give them some hints. Um, what I may say may conflict with what you already do. Don't change what you do if it works. That's, that's gardening is all about. Whatever works is the best way to do it. It's, a, it's an incomplete science, or an incomplete science. Anyway, um, pumpkins, of course, are an excellent fall decoration. Whether you use them for um, jack-o'-lanterns or whether you use the mini pumpkins, they're all great for for a lot of uses, and they're also good for eating. You can make pies or you can stuff them. Um, I'm sure there's other ways to eat them, but uh, I don't know exactly all the ways. Uh, of course, pumpkins do grow very well in our area, uh, provided you don't start them too early and we don't get a frost too early, or, or if we don't get rain. Rain is, uh, water is a very important thing on pumpkins. Things to consider when you're, growing, when you're gonna grow pumpkins are what kind do you wanna grow? Um, are you going to grow them for pies? Are you going to grow them for jack-o'-lanterns? Are you just going to grow them for decoration? For decoration, there's so many kinds out there. And if you're going to eat them, make sure you buy one that's intended for pies, to, intended to be eating. Uh, they're all edible. Nothing is, they're, they're, they're not poisonous or anything. And all the seeds are edible. They, they all work very well. Um, you can get your seeds, of course, at, at any of the garden centers. Uh, most any store's got uh, seeds. There's, there's Agway seeds, and there's hot seeds, and there's some more Speedway seeds. So it's, and and by, the, by the amount you want to use. If, if you're only gonna grow a few pumpkins, just buy a little package. That's gonna give you way more than enough seeds. So the uh, the idea of pumpkins is, is prepare your soil for your pumpkins before you start your seeds. I mean, you can do that last fall. You can do that in April. You can do it sometimes early Mar in March if uh, the snow is all gone and the ground's dried up. Prepare your soil ahead of time. If you're going to use compost, put it in early, get it all mixed in, or put it in last year. It's, it's a year ahead of time is even better. Um, now, you can start your seeds indoors two to three weeks before you're gonna plant outdoors. This is an example of the seeds I started indoors. They were all started three weeks ago today. They were all planted at the exact same time. Now, my method of planting, or for preparing seeds for planting is I soak them in hot water for two hours. And then I just plant them in the, the pots. There's two or sometimes three seeds in each hole and it, it doesn't matter um, what you use for a medium to grow them in. I've got my own potting soil. I've got like pro mix, you know, a prepared uh, growing medium. And I've got seed starter. And they all come up, as you can see, uh, they all come up sporadically, even though they're all started at the exact same time. And it doesn't matter what kind of medium they are in. This one came up the first, and it's the biggest, and it's probably because it had the most heat. And that's the only explanation I have for that. And then I've got one hiding in here that just came up yesterday. So eventually they do show up. Now, um, the next thing to consider on, on your pumpkins is where you're gonna plant them. You need a good, bright, sunny location. You should be full sun. That means from like eight in the morning till six o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, don't plant them in the shade of a building. Uh, don't plant them under a tree. It, it just doesn't work. They won't grow well. Um, 
Uh, when, when you're preparing your soil, if you're going to um, use a commercial fertilizer, put, put that on the ground with your lime, your lime you garden every year, and mix it all in good, incorporate it in the ground, and, and that'll be a, a good way to uh, get it all ready to uh, go. Now, I, I, mix, I brought in two different kinds of potting soil so that you could, you could get an idea of how I do it. I'm just going to show you how I, I plant my seeds. You want, your, you want your pots. You want to fill a pot with soil, right full, but don't pack it. Just, just fill it up. And that's one with potting soil, and this is one with, with a pro-mix type soil. And you want it to be moist, not wet, but just moist. And then ideally, you plant your seeds in a pot. You plant them about an inch deep. And it's, it's a very easy thing to do. You can just open up a package. You can put a couple seeds on top. And then just take your finger or your thumb and push them in about the size of your, your first knuckle, about an inch down. And then just take the, some more medium and put it on top of it. And you got, you've got them planted. You can firm them a little bit. The way I like to firm my pots, I just pick them up and drop them down. And that's, that's got them packed down as tight as they need to be packed. Now the next thing I do is I water them with hot water. Not scalding hot water, just hot water out of the tap. Something that you can, you can put your finger in, it won't burn you, but it's, it feels good and hot. And either <clears throat> take a nice, a nice watering can with a nice fine nozzle and water them. You're going to have to water them several times to get it to soak down through. Or you can just put them into a container like that and fill the container with hot water. And then just let them sit there until it soaks up. And, and the, you can see the water on the top quite often. You know it's, it's wet enough. And then you never have to water them again until after they've sprouted. You, you put them in a container like this. Uh, this, is a, this was a cookie ta container from one of the grocery stores. I put them in that. And of course, I used a smaller pot. You can see those are smaller pots. And cover them with plastic. Put them in a nice warm place where the soil is going to stay warm, say like 75 to 80 degrees. And you have a, a piece of plastic on them, that way the water doesn't evaporate too fast. And that helps them sprout. Now after you've, uh, you've got them growing, three weeks later, you've got a nice pot. It's time to plant them out in the ground. So you want to prepare your soil or your beds Either plant them in straight rows, about three or four feet apart, or you can make hills that are three to four feet in diameter and probably 10 inches high. And it, that's, that's a good way to do it because it helps the soil warm up faster. And it also, if you've got compost in it, it, it helps it um, maintain the, the moisture without having to go too deep to get to it. Now, on these, these pots, you can see the, the nice root system in just three weeks. So they're all ready to go. Now, if, if you take this out, put one pot in the middle of each hill. Now, if you've got two plants in it and they're growing good, you can leave two plants in it. If you've got more, if you put in more seeds and you've got more, if you've got a weak one, just take, take a pair of scissors or, or um, trimming shears or something. Just cut that one off. Don't try and pull it out. Just, just break it. You don't, you don't want to have too many plants in one hill. So you just put that in one hill and plant them about an inch deeper than they are in the pot that you started them in. And of course I didn't mention to begin with you should harden them off. You should get them used to being outdoors. By placing them outdoors in a, uh, a sunny location, uh, I like to put them on the east side of my house so that they get sun in the morning and then the, at noontime the sun goes away and, and they've had enough sun for, for, uh, for a few days to harden off. And you don't want them in the wind. If it's a windy place, uh, they'll they whip around and it'll break the stalk and the leaves will get silvery looking and it just, it just hurts them. So you want to harden them off for a few days before you plant them. The other way is, of course, 
If you don't stack them inside, you can plant the seeds directly in the, in the uh, hills. And you can do it either way. You can, you can make your hill, like I say, three or four feet in diameter, and you can put uh, in two or three different spots, you can put a couple of seeds or one seed, or you can put like two or three right in the middle of the hill. And here again, plant them somewhere between one and two inches deep. The bigger the seed, the deeper you can plant it. If, you've got, if you're growing munchkins or, or mini pumpkins, they're, they're a small seed. So only plant those seeds about an inch deep. And of course, all the, all the pumpkins and all the, the mini pumpkins are in the same family as gourds. So uh, if you've grown gourds, you know how grow, corns, uh, gourds grow, the pumpkins will grow the same way. Um, the next important thing is taking care of your pumpkins after they've come up in the garden or after they've, uh, you've planted them. Um, give them about two or three weeks to grow, and then you want to side dress them with a, um, well, I use a commercial fertilizer. You may want to use an organic fertilizer. There's lots of organics out there. Um, just find the, the fertilizer that suits you and use it. It, it, it doesn't matter. Um, and the other thing, the other important thing is, well, there's two more important things. Watering is crucial. Pumpkins like a lot of water, but they don't want to be mucky wet. Uh, so let your soil kind of dry on the top, let it look dry, and then you should water them thoroughly. And when you water them, try not to soak the leaves, because if the leaves sit with water on them, uh, you can get some powdery mildew, and eventually that powdery mildew will just spread all over the place and kill all the plants. It's just the nature of things. And if, your watering should be done in the morning, first thing in the morning so that the, the sun has time to dry them off and they'll be great. Try never to water them at night. Mother Nature waters at night, but that's Mother Nature. Don't you try to do that. Um, the other thing is weeds. The, the weeds can drive you crazy, but they also choke out the pumpkins to begin with. After the pumpkins get big and growing all over the place, they can take care of themselves, but for the first few weeks, at least the first few weeks, maybe even all season long. Make sure you keep the weeds away. Um, the other thing with pumpkins, they, they do grow all over the place. I mean, they can, it, you, may not, you may have a little spot in your yard and they're going out in your grass and you don't want them there. You can pick the pumpkin up if there's a pumpkin and the vine and very carefully move it back to where you want it and make them go the direction you want them to go. Uh, that's, that's uh, as, as the pumpkins grow and mature, they turn orange or a yellow color, depending on the variety of pumpkin. Don't pick your pumpkins until they're fully ripe. They should be, they should be a nice hard shell on them, um, and they should be a good color, good orangey or a good dark yellow color, whichever you happen to use them. And the best way to know that it's time to cut them is the leaves are starting to die, the stem is starting to turn brown, then you can harvest them. Uh, when you harvest your pumpkins, cut the vines off. Cut, cut the, leave the stem three or four inches long, if, if it is that long, and just cut it right, right, at, right where it's attached to the vine. Just take your shears and cut it off. And, and try not to pick your pumpkins up by the, the uh, stem, because if you break the stem off, that's, that's like a cut, and that can get infected and, and cause the pumpkin to rot. Um, Pumpkins, of course, can be stored. Your eating pumpkins can be stored for most of the winter and you can enjoy them for as long as you've got them in a, a nice, cool, dry location. And when, the, uh, when you harvest your pumpkins, leave them out in the sun for a few days and let them finish hardening up without the vines and it, it kind of like cures them, if you will. It makes them last a little longer. The other thing I forgot to mention at first is how soon you should pick your pumpkins or, or how you should plant your pumpkins to have them on time for, for fall when you want them. If you want them early in the season for decorating, you want to plant them early in the season. And all the seeds have a days to harvest on them. This is a Connecticut field pumpkin and the days to harvest are 100 days. So if you want them, if you want to have these pumpkins in the middle of September, you want to plant them the first of June. That puts them in, into the first, uh, the middle of September. If you want your pumpkins the end of September, plant on a little bit later. Uh, pumpkins will grow and mature, and they'll keep growing, but but as long as the the, the conditions are right. 
they won't overgrow and they won't die just because they've reached maturity. But uh, if, you, if you pick them off and they're the wrong kind of pumpkin and they're not fully ripe, they're, gonna, they're just going to uh, rot on you. They're going to deteriorate. They won't stand up for months and months um, in the hot weather if they're picked too early. And if you want them for, uh, for Halloween, try to plant them a little bit later so that they mature later. And then you're apt to have a, a nice pumpkin for Halloween. Um, the other thing I think I have to mention is the Ag Commission is going to be giving out a pumpkin set, um, or a kit, not a set, a pumpkin kit. It's got a nice little pot of soil in it, and it's got a nice little batch of seeds, complement of the Ag Commission, and somebody will be giving them out after the uh, Memorial Day Parade in front of the Congregational Church. Um, I do, do have a couple of handouts. Of course, I have, a, I have a written copy of what I was supposed to say, whether I said it all or not. And I have a, a nice brochure that tells you how to grow giant pumpkins. If you're into growing or want to get into growing giant pumpkins, that's a little different than growing your regular pumpkins. There's a little more tricks to it, especially if you want to grow one big enough to take to a fair and enter a contest. There's a, there's, that's, quite a, uh, that's quite a job. I mean, it's not a hard job, but it's a demanding job. And you, there's ways to do it and, and really get a good pumpkin. So I think I have covered everything. Yes, sir. Uh, do you cover, when you say cover with plastic, do you use clear plastic or black plastic? Clear plastic. Um, it doesn't matter if it's clear plastic, black plastic. But once you've covered them with plastic, uh, by the way, don't put them in the sun. Put them in a warm spot, but not in the sun, because the sun, if plastic and sun, it, the uh, sun will intensify and, and your pot will get too hot. Over 85 degrees is not good for your seeds. And if you get up into the 90s, you, you have a temperature, you have a tendency to be cooking them rather than growing them. So. Can you, can you put them like under the heat lamps like with your chickens? Um, I mean, you as long as it's not too close to the heat lamp. You can control the temperature in there. Right, as long as the, your soil temperature is 75 to 85 degrees is ideal for pumpkins. Um, as long as the heat lamp is far enough up. And of course, if you use grow lights, you have grow um, chamber, um, a seed starting area, that's great. That, that'll, be, that'll be good for them. But once they start growing, once they sprout, get the cover off of them. And if, if, only, one, if only one seed starts, or one, one plant has come up, it still uncover the whole thing. And, and unless you can take one out and just set it aside and keep the others covered for another day or two. But, but they germinate irregularly. They don't all come up the same day. Now you, you said when you first started out, you soak them in hot water for a, like, two hours. Two hours. Were those ones there soaked? These were all soaked. They were? The, these ones that I just showed you that I planted, they weren't. But, but I, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I have an insulated uh, coffee cup and I just, I just put the seeds in that and I fill it with hot water and put it on the counter and let it sit for a couple hours and then I plant the seeds. You can't like water though, you wouldn't put it really hot. 110, 120 degree water. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, that's 10. Well, it's going to drop. The temperature drops constantly once, they, once you get it in there. And by the time you, in two hours, by the time you get around to taking them out of the water, it's, it's down to being, you know, fairly cool water. It doesn't feel hot at all anymore. But it, it, gets the, it gets the germ excited and gets it moving. It just gets the whole thing working. Does that work on other plants? Um, it'll work on all of your cucubits. Pumpkins, uh, squashes, your summer squash, your winter squashes. They're all in the same family. Gourds, it'll, it'll work for all of them. And most smaller seeds, you don't bother with that. Um, all, all your different... Uh, Every, every seed has its, its own little requirements. You know, some seeds need to be in the light to germinate. Some seeds want to be in the dark. Some, some want warm soil. Some, some actually want cool soil. So it's, it's, you, you really need to... Uh, um, so a lot of times a catalog will tell you what temperature they germinate best at, and whether they want sun or, whether they, or light or whether they want dark. Does pH level have, have much to do with those? 
Yeah, I did kind of miss that, thank you. The pH is very important on pumpkins. They want to be on a fairly sweet soil, pH somewhere in the vicinity of, of 6.5 to 6.8. So they really like a, a fair amount of lime. You, you really should lime your, your garden very good in the fall. And because it takes, it really takes six months for lime to get active. And so you, you lime it in the fall and I do it again in the spring. But that's regular, regular lime. Regular garden lime. I don't want to knock it too hard. I don't like pelletized lime. I don't believe in pelletized lime, but you do what you like. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, because it takes, it takes a while, like a year or two before pelletized breaks down. From what I understand, I'm not. Well, I'm not sure how fast pelletized breaks down. I, I just have my own feelings on that, and I, I really don't want to get into it. But um, to spread my, when I spread my lime, I wet it. I put my lime in a wheelbarrow and I mix it with a little bit of water. You don't want it mucky wet, but, but even like this soil here, if your lime is like that, when you spread it, it goes where you spread it. If it's powder and dusty, if it's windy, half of it doesn't go to your garden. So if you wet it first, it's, it's no problem. You can spread it by hand. If you don't have a lime spreader, if you've got a spreader and you don't care, just put it on. It's fine. If you do it by hand, you take the lime, the sweater that I have, and a lot of people have, is propellatized lime. Can you use the powder on that, or do I have to go back to Ackley and ask them? I would say you can use your, any lime in that. I hadn't heard that there was... You know, because the way it is, it goes into a hopper, and then there's a spinner thing around. Oh, that's fine for regular lime. That, it is. It will work on regular lime, yeah. Most oh, lime... Actually. Most lime, lime uh, spreaders are just a drop spreader. Yeah. You know, um, the big commercial ones, uh, actually there's a, there's a fellow in Hardwick that'll lime your whole property for you, and he uses basically a sander, the same thing you sand the streets with. And he will, he'll sand your whole property, I mean, he'll lime your whole property for you. And he, can, he, can, he can lime your property cheaper than you can buy it for. That's right. That's true. But he buys it by the big truckload and, right. yeah. Um, I mean, with mine, I put in 100 pounds and I drive it for two minutes and it's empty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, here in, here in New England, our, our soil tends to be very acidy. Uh, both the acid rain and, of course, all the leaves. You know, oak leaves are very acid. Um, pine, pine needles are very acid forming. And it, we just have a lot of acidity in our you, Soil. When uh, I'm taking this beyond what you started out with, but for curiosity factor, do you, if you spread manure, do you lime it before you spread your manure or after? Doesn't matter. It don't. Okay. As long as you lime it, and you should mix your manure in. Don't leave it laying on top of the ground. It's 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 uh, you're wasting part of your manure if you leave it on top of the ground. If there's nitrogen in your manure, nitrogen is very, a very unstable um, a fertilizer. It, it, it soaks into the soil or it washes into the soil with rain and it actually evaporates. So if it's laying on top of the ground, you're gonna lose a lot to evaporation. So you're, not, you're losing part of your, your nutrients that way. So it's, it's always best to, and there's no point in putting fertilizer on frozen ground. You know, like uh, farmers now, they pretty much don't spread uh, manure during the winter when the ground's frozen. Uh, in some places, it's actually illegal to do it, but Is that right? but it's you know it, it, everything changes. But it, there's no point to it. Any more questions? Okay. Thank you, Bill. We look forward to seeing everybody Memorial Day in front of the Congregational Church to get your free pumpkin kits and hopefully we'll have some really great pumpkins here in Brookfield. <laughs>